皆様お待たせいたしました。Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for waiting.This is parallel session 11: Making cities more sustainable in Asia, bridging theory and practice.The moderators of this session is executive director, vice president, Kyushu Institute of Technology, director of Kita Kyushu Urban Center, IJAS, Hiroyuki Kage, and Mr. Eric Zussman, leader, principal policy researcher, integrated policies for sustainable societies、uh, area in IJAS. Please start the session. Good afternoon. I'm Kage from Kyushu Institute of Technology. The director of Kyushu Urban Center of IJAS as well. I will serve as the co chair, the moderator of this session. In the first half, we would like to focus on theories. In the second half, we want to examine specific problems of Asian cities. We have three Japanese cities presenting. They are involved with cooperation with other Asian cities to solve common problems. So, we have presentation representing Japan as well as Asian countries. We also want to focus on both sides, theories and practices. And we have Eric as another moderator. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you so much,、uh, Kage Sensei.、Uh, my name is Eric Zussman, and I'm、uh, area leader at the、uh, Integrated Policies for Sustainable Societies area in、uh, IGES headquarters. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here today. And、uh, as、uh, Kage Sensei has、uh, kindly mentioned,、uh, we have a very interesting and、uh, we hope will be an、uh, informative panel. Uh, and uh, we see the uh, panel uh, basically uh, breaking down into、uh, two main sections.、Um, I will uh, help uh, moderate and、uh, facilitate the discussion in the first section,、uh, which will be a little bit more on the conceptual side. Uh, and in that uh, session, uh, we'll have a framing presentation uh, from my colleague, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ryoko Nakano,、uh, and she will offer a framing presentation uh, which will uh, highlight uh, some of the key insights from、uh, work on what we call、uh, sustainability transitions.、Uh, this will then be followed、uh, by a presentation from、uh, one of our colleagues from、uh, the Wuppertal Institute,、uh, located in Germany. Uh, and uh, this will be from uh, Johannes um, uh, Van, Jek- Van Jacob. Uh, and uh, he will、uh, share with us some、uh, insights on the work that they've done on、uh, transitions within a city called、uh, Botrop in Germany, an innovation city.、Uh, we will then go from、uh, that presentation to a、uh, presentation from、uh, one of our colleagues in the、uh, OECD. Uh, and uh, this will be from、uh, colleague、uh, Dr. Tadashi. Uh, Matsumoto, um, and uh, he will uh, reflect upon uh, some of the experiences、um, that have been highlighted in our recent OECD report on green cities、uh, and a conceptual framework that was outlined in that report、uh, that can、uh, help c- cities、um, understand how to make these、uh, sustainability transitions.、Uh, and then we'll start making our way from the sort of more conceptual side of things、uh, to m- the more applied side of things. Uh, we'll have a presentation、uh, from our colleague、uh, Kino san、uh, from the Ministry of Environment in Japan.、Uh, and、um, he's、uh, from the Office of International Cooperation, and he's working、um, on、uh, Japan's new、uh, joint crediting mechanism.、Um, and、uh, this joint crediting mechanism will open the door for、uh, hopefully some exchanges between、uh, Japanese cities and uh, cities uh, throughout Asia. Uh, and especially in terms of technology transfer. So,、uh, that gives you a very brief outline of、uh, the、uh, landscape for today. And、uh, without further ado, I would like to、uh, then call up uh, my colleague uh, uh, Nakano san、uh, to uh, make a presentation、um, uh, introducing the session and familiarizing the audience with sustainability transitions.、Uh, Nakano san, the、uh, floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Zussman. Uh, my name is Ryoko Nakano.、Um, I am a researcher at、um, IGES. And、uh, today, as Dr. Zisman has、um, introduced us,、um, this session will be looking at what makes cities more sustainable in Asia. And my role over here is to introduce the different strands of theory related to sustainability transitions. 
Now, today, we face fundamentally sustainable challenges in several domains. Uh, energy supply, for example, is confronted with a rapid depletion of natural resources. Uh, water supply and sanitation have to tackle with a broad range of uh, water scarcity and flood um, extreme situations. The transport sector is challenged by congestions and local air pollution. Transitions are required to reach a sustainable level which can only be re realized by developing a balance between three pillars, social, environmental, and economic aspects. So, transitions, it is not a new concept. Uh, there are different strands of different scholars from diverse fields who have uh, come from natural science, economics, sociology, and tackled this topic. You may see here some very familiar names such as Thomas Kuhn, Polanyi, Ligon, just to name a few. If transitions are technically driven, it needs to be environmentally and socially sensitive when dealing with the uh, issues that they have. Sustainable challenges are coupled with strong path dependencies and lockings placed by established technologies which are highly entwined with user practices, lifestyles, technologies, regulations, institutional structures. As a consequence, established social technical systems undergo incremental rather than radical changes, and such incremental changes will not suffice to cope with prevailing sustainability challenges. You can see here recent strands of sustainability transitions theory that have increased and intention in the last 10 to 15 years. These were evolved around a team of Dutch scholars and they can be put into four categories, as you can see here. Those that focus on technology, those that focus on the relations between technology innovation and social challenges. When we are looking at the relation between social and technology changes, we would presume that we should be looking at energy supply, water supply, and transportation supply. These are all systems that are related to social and technology changes. When looking at them, we should be looking at actors such as firms and citizens, regulations and standards, material artifacts and so on, which are all intertwined when they provide specific services for the society. And these are all dependent on each other and our focus should be on how, what are the crucial elements for making this transition. In addition to social and technology relations, we should also be looking at the role of governance. Some uh, scholars have been um, looking at governance because having long-term goals would inform the direction of transitions, giving guidance in the path of sustainable transitions. Another strand of theory looks at multi-level perspectives. Some scholars would say transitions occur in different levels of society to overcome the barriers that prevail, such as you can see here, cultural values, vested interests, sunk investment. All these barriers prevail and prevent change. What should be the steps that should be taken? Here is a kind of a theory that shows that. The first step would be niche development, which would point to experimental or niche projects that occur to engage in a learning process of what works, uh, what is needed in terms of technology and institutional regulation, rules, policies in a protected area. However, to scale this, to make it larger, there needs to be further changes in the enabling environment, which we call here regime change, such as regulations, markets, and culture. Finally, the society would change in terms of the overall infrastructure and social values changes that we see here as landscape changes. The novel technology to be deployed would then be deployed in a grander scale. However, not all transitions are initially successful, as we can see in the electric vehicle cases in the 1900s. They were more prominent before the large, light, powerful internal combustion engines were developed and replaced them. 
what happened was there was an improvement in road infrastructure, discovery of large oil reserves, and this gave way to gasoline-powered cars. Some transitions are not environmentally sustainable, as you can see here in the case of conventional gasoline-fueled automobiles, as we all know. We feel that cities provide a good place for transitions, such as is the case of uh, Curitiba, Brazil, with the bus rapid transit. This, uh, well, BRT, as you know, it reduced auto trips, saved fuel consumptions, and resulted in ambient air pollution at a city scale, becoming a highly publicized sustainable city. So cities in Asia can shed light on sustainable transitions. As you can see here, the Kitakyushu Sea of Death in the 1960s is, has transparent, well, transfer, well, transparent into what you can see in the upper right of the PowerPoint side. One can learn from the Kitakyushu experience. The key discussion points for today are three. What triggers incremental rapid change? Who are the key actors in the process? Are experiences unique or can it be replicated and scaled? Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Ryoko. That was a very, very uh, useful uh, framing presentation, and it highlighted uh, some of the uh, developments in uh, theory on sustainability transitions and gave us some uh, very uh, useful illustrations of uh, both how this applies uh, to the case of uh, uh, automobiles and uh, why cities are important places for these transitions to happen, especially in Asia. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, move from uh, Asia for the time being, uh, over to a case where a sustainability transition uh, is underway. Um, and uh, this will be a case that we presented uh, by our colleague from uh, the Wuppertal Institute. Um, and uh, this is uh, Dr. Uh, ben Jacob. Uh, and uh, he will uh, be sharing with us uh, some of the work that they're doing uh, in Germany on uh, sustainability transitions in a city context. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome, uh, welcome and the introduction, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for inviting me here to Japan to uh, give you some insights in our work uh, on sustainable urban transitions. Um, I would like to start uh, with uh, skipping my first slides. <laughs> uh, these uh, were supposed to give you some uh, more broad background information about the Wuppertal Institute. But due to the uh, restricted time, I think it's not the time for commercials here. Uh, you will find this information on our homepage on, the, on my very final slide. You find the information. And now let's uh, dive directly into the topic. Um, yeah, my presentation will about is, is located in this uh, theory part. And uh, now let's start with a, uh, with a kind of abstract and complex theory slide right here. Um, it's supposed to give you uh, an overview about our research approach we follow at the Wuppertal Institute when we analyze and elaborate uh, transitions, especially urban transition processes. Um, let me guide you through this picture here. On the very uh, right side, we have the first dimension of knowledge we have together, and this is target knowledge. We have to find answers uh, to the question, transition to what? Where, where do we want to go? And we have to define these targets, and we have to define social ecological targets for a sustainable world um, to identify trade-offs and uh, synergies bet uh, between these dimensions, of course, as well as barriers. Secondly, we have to gather knowledge about the existing, uh, existing system. Uh, and we have to understand the social technical system in its natural environment, and we have to understand how the elements of this uh, system work together and are in interlinked. And if we do this and overlap these two dimensions, th then we can gather transformation knowledge, and this is what we heard in, in the presentation before. Then we are able to do multi-level experiments, uh, and multi-level means from niche developments to uh, changes of the landscape. So this is the theoretical uh, background of our works we do. 
And uh, normally it's like this that uh, uh, people from uh, municipalities, uh, from the uh, municipal governments, contact us and say, uh, Wuppertal Institute, please do a, a strategy for us, uh, develop a strategy, a climate neutral strategy for us, for our city. And the example I would like to present now is somehow different, because in this case, uh, the innovation city Ruhr, model city Bottrop, it was uh, like this that uh, a private sector association asked us um, to develop a concept for a competition. Um, this, is, uh, this uh, in, um, association is called the, so, uh, in the Initiativkreis Ruhr, and Ruhr stands for a river uh, and uh, for a whole region in the western part of Germany. It's a very old industrialized region with, uh, which faces a lot of economic and structural uh, problems right now because of the fade out of the mining industry. And this private sector association in initiated a competition to identify a city within this region which could function as a model city to elaborate strategies for climate neutral urban development. Uh, the target was set, it, uh, it was set uh, in this uh, pilot area, CO2 reduction should be reduced up to 50% until 2020. And 16 cities from this region took part in the competition and in the end, the city of Bottrop uh, won the competition and is called now the Innovation City Ruhr Model City Bottrop. Uh, and I would like to present you uh, the institutional background of this project because this is kind of innovative too. Of course, the, the target to reduce uh, CO2 emissions up to 50% is uh, also ambitious, but uh, in combination with these uh, institutional innovations, it's kind of unique in Germany and Europe. Uh, here are some impressions about the pilot district in the city of Bottrop. Uh, the city uh, uh, in a whole has about 150,000 inhabitants, so quite small town compared to Asian dimensions. In this pilot district we have uh, 70,000 inhabitants, uh, nearly 15,000 buildings uh, from which are 12,500 uh, 12, residential. Um, a very important pillar of the institutional framework uh, guiding this uh, project is the so-called round table. Uh, I just told you that the, the uh, initiative for this project came from a private sector uh, association. Uh, the city government took the lead in the competition phase, but when the city of Bottrop won, the first thing they did was uh, establish the so-called innovation city uh, management organization. This management organization is uh, financed by uh, governmental uh, budgets and by the private sector association and is in charge of the whole process. And they organize this round table where all uh, the important people come together from the city government, from the private sector, from science, uh, craftsmen, from local craftsmen, project managers and so on. And they meet twice a month to steer this project and to discuss the projects which should be implemented in the district uh, in the model district. Uh, I told you uh, about the private sector association and on the very left side you can see the 62 members of this association and you will recognize that there are some uh, local uh, um, companies uh, and banks for example but also this huge uh, global players like uh, biomaterial sciences, uh, E.ON, RV and so on. They all uh, come together in this association and uh, build a kind of industrial board for this project. Uh, a second uh, board, advisory board, uh, is the scientific uh, board, which is led by the Wuppertal Institute. And 26 members come together in this board from all universities uh, of the region. Uh, and, and a third very important pillar is the interministerial working group. This whole project has a lot of support from the uh, government of the federal state of Northern Westphalia within Germany. Uh, and all important uh, ministries come together in this group and are very supportive for this project. Um, a parallel process is the so-called master plan process. A consortium led by Albert Speer and Partner um, elaborated uh, a so-called master plan for this project, uh, which began with a very comprehensive potential analysis and ended up with a nearly 1,350 pages 
compendium of possible and uh, uh, possible projects to be implemented uh, within the city. Uh, and they also provide the so-called Innovation City Ruhr Manual, which is unfortunately only available in German right now, but we are working on an English uh, version, which is kind of a blueprint for urban retrofitting. Uh, besides the institutional innovations behind this project, also the thematical uh, approach is kind of innovative. The energy turnaround, Energiewende in Germany, uh, is always supposed to be a top-down process, um, uh, a top-down process, which uh, brings a lot of inst infrastructural projects with it. And um, the approach in Bottrop is a bottom-up approach, coming starting with the buildings, upscaling to districts, and then the city. So the target group of the project are the inhabitants of the pilot area. Um, the, uh, the structure of the uh, nearly 200 projects uh, covers a wide range, so ne nearly 200 projects right now, and we have the half time of the project, as I just told you, the, uh, the target is to reduce CO2 emissions up to 2020 by 50%, and now we're at the half time. Nearly 200 projects from the areas living, working, energy, mobility, and city uh, are implemented right now, uh, and this is a very broad variety of projects from uh, car sharing f uh, with electric bikes, uh, uh, wastewater treatment, and so on. And I would like to highlight one project uh, which is uh, really unique in Germany, the so-called Zukunftshaus, Future House project. Uh, the idea behind this project was to retrofit three buildings to plus energy standard. Uh, the, um, the task is to do this in building stock. Of course, uh, urban transition, of course, does not mean to tear down all the buildings and uh, build them up new from scratch with high efficiency standards. The task is to do this within the existing building stock and three buildings um, were selected for this, a detached house, an apartment building, and a commercial building. And uh, the, the companies from the, from the private sector association brought in there all their technologies to make it possible that these houses uh, have a plus energy standard. And now these houses are open to the public and can be visited. Uh, and you can experience this there. My uh, nearly final slide, I'm very sorry that uh, this is part in German. I just want to uh, uh, show you the red dots there. Um, these, are the, these dots indicate uh, building owners uh, who took the opportunity of free energy consultation, uh, which was provided in the starting phase of the project. Uh, and of course, many buildings in the following have been uh, refurbished, uh, which leads to the impressive number that the rate of retrofitting in Bottrop 2012 to 2013 is nearly 8% compared to 0.9% in overall Germany. My final slide, once again, what's, uh, the, what's the part of the Wuppertal Institute? Together with our colleagues from the 26 uh, universities around uh, the city, we developed a research agenda and set up a systematic long-term accompanying, long accompanying research. We ev evaluate the uh, implemented projects, and of course, we propose new projects. It is important to see that we have two perspectives uh, within this research on transition. Uh, here, I come back to my first slide. This is kind of the meter level, gather knowledge about uh, um, targets, system, and transition. But also, we do transformative research, uh, which means that we uh, proposed projects which really have to uh, help to contribute to the overall target. Here the promised contact information. Uh, do not hesitate to contact me and visit the homepage of the Innovation City Ruhr in the very end you can find this. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Van Jacob, for a very illuminating uh, presentation and uh, for a very useful uh, demonstration of the uh, application of this approach uh, in the context of uh, Germany. Uh, and uh, 
the institutional structures that help guide it, as well as some of the uh, projects that are being implemented. I think I want to live in a future home one of these days. Um, I'd like to now uh, call up our uh, next presenter. Our next presenter is uh, Dr. Matsumoto uh, from uh, OECD, uh, and uh, he will be presenting on uh, some of the uh, green cities in Asia, uh, and uh, perhaps also talking a little bit about the case of uh, Kit to Kyushu. Uh, Dr. Matsumoto, the, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Uh, if you allow me, I like to to present in in, in Japanese today. Uh, Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm Matsumoto from OECD. Thank you for giving me time to speak to you, especially organizer IGES and uh, UNUIS. Uh, yes, the, this is the f very first time for OECD to participate in ISAP. OECD and IGES, I believe, will be able to deepen the mutual relationship in the area of research. So I'm very happy to be here. Today, I want to, I want to cover the following three points. First of all, OECD's approach to green growth of cities. What we are trying to do is to promote green growth in cities. In what way, what are the approaches OECD uses to promote the growth of urban areas, especially the way we look at Asian cities, especially key issues, that is the second point. And thirdly, I want to focus on Dynamic Asia, uh, the project named Urban Green Growth in Dynamic Asia, which is already undertaken. You might know what OECD is. Just give you two pieces of information. OECD do propose policies, policy ideas to central government in the economic development area. There is a department within OECD that I belong to that focus on urban planning. And when it comes to OECD, you tend to think this is a, a group of developed countries. But we do f study on Asian cities of the countries that are non-members of OECDs. So the first point, the OECD's green growth strategy approach to green growth of urban areas. There are four things I want to discuss. The first thing is that we can achieve growth and green, uh, which is often discussed under the title of green economy. So specifically, what are we going to realize with green growth? There are four things, as I said. Last year, we issued the Green Growth of Cities uh, report. Green job is one thing. Secondly, attractive, attractiveness of cities. The third, third is green goods and services that cities can offer. And number four, this is particularly unique to cities. It has to do with attractiveness of cities. It is the improvement of the values of the cities. All of these are important to realize to achieve urban green gro growth. But how can we actually uh, realize this? We always focus on the three things. One is innovation. Second is human capital. And the third factor is infrastructure. Investment in these three areas can help achieve green growth and green society. That is really the overall concept. In this particular study, we emphasize the importance of cities in order to realize green growth. 
there is much that can be done on a national level, but at the same time, it's not just municipal government. We are focusing on cities, the policies that can be in, impl implemented on city levels that can be very useful and effective. I'm sorry, the order of the slide is wrong. Let me focus on the third important point on this slide. This is the concept of sustainability. As I said earlier, there are three pillars to every one of these we have to approach. But at the same time, when you make an approach to economy, if you take a look at this table, we have economic policies on the vertical box. Economic policies would help improve efficiency, but it's not just help growing the economy. It can also touch equity and environment. It affects environment and equity. So you have to look not only diagonally, you really have to look at other boxes like equity and environmental sustainability, the possible impact of economic policies on other aspects, equity and equality or environment. And firstly, you have multiple sectors there, uh, energy, land, use, and so forth. Not just sectoral approaches, you have to first look at the outcome that are listed vertically. In other words, you are asked to use comprehensive tools, which we OECD place much weight on. So specifically, uh, utilizing these concepts, we implement green city programs. We started this project in 2010. As I said earlier, the concept of green growth was established first, and based upon this established concept, we analyzed multiple cities. As was introduced earlier, Akita Kyushu uh, was taken as one of the four examples. We actually issued a report in 2012. Other cities, Chicago, Paris, Stockholm, including Akita Kyushu, there are four cities where we actually implemented our project. The information we derived out of these project, which is utilized on the second project, so the stage is now moved to Asia. Asian cities, naturally, the study we have conducted conventionally must be modified because we are targeting Asian cities. They are different cities. However, the experiences and knowledges we have accumulated, how can we share with agent cities? Now, the knowledge sharing, therefore, is very important. This is a, a very important area we focus much on this time around. Asian cities were already discussed, so you can see that there are diverse urbanization levels. When cities are urbanized, the economic growth is not always in proportional to the progress of urbanization. When urbanization is near to zero, naturally, these districts are rural areas. It is true if these areas will be urbanized, GDP will increase. But if, say, a city reaches 100% urbanization, GDP would not always increase in proportion. Many Asian cities are rapidly urbanized today, but are they enjoying the same pace of economic development? Why some cities are not enjoying the rapid growth of economy? Why economy are not growing in line with urbanization? These are important questions as we examine many Asian cities. And lastly, uh, this is the overview of OECD project. This slide. We have a concept paper 
as I mentioned earlier, discussing different characteristics of Asian cities and how they are different from OECD cities. Last month in Paris uh, Policy Forum, we made announcement. Uh, number two is case study. We just started our activities to study case studies. We have a representative from Bangkok today in this session. A new case study is going to be implemented. A workshop is going to be implemented in August, followed by Vietnam, Malaysia, and in Indonesia. These are the countries and cities that we are going to focus on for our case studies now. Lastly, uh, what we want to do is to share our knowledge. Based upon four city studies, we want to organize workshops so that these four cities can collaborate with each other. City to city collaboration is something that we want to achieve. Also, OECD conducted f other city case studies, Stockholm, Paris, Chicago, and Kitakyushu City. And there are other cities we studied. We want to involve all of them so that all of the cities we surveyed will be able to collaborate and exchange knowledge with each other. So this is something that we are doing for green growth of cities. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Matsumoto, uh, for a very enlightening presentation on some of the work that the OECD is doing and uh, highlighting uh, some of the ways that uh, we can conceive of a green city and uh, plan for a green city, uh, emphasizing a lot of the uh, integration that must uh, come across different sectors and the metrics that we need to look at, for instance, uh, not only efficiency, but uh, equity and sustainability. Um, and uh, concluding with uh, some notes on a conceptual framework that will be applied in some cities uh, in Asia in the near future, uh, Bangkok included. Uh, now I would like to uh, bring up um, a presenter from uh, the Ministry of Environment Japan. Uh, the presenter is uh, Kino-san, uh, who is uh, in charge of the uh, Office for Environmental, excuse me, Office for International Cooperation. Uh, and Kino-san will be presenting on uh, some of the experiences with uh, Japan's uh, joint crediting mechanism, otherwise known as the JCM. And this will hopefully provide a nice transition into some of the presentations from the individual cities in the second half of our discussion today. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. My name is Kino, of Minister of Environment. Uh, my presentation is about the JCM projects to support low carbon measures at the city level. And uh, the subtitle of this uh, the session is uh, From Theory to Practice. And in fact, uh, the, the project that I'm going to introduce to you is the project undertaken by Ministry of Environment to promote low carbon society in Asian cities. And I'd like to share with you uh, the experiences of ours, and I am very grateful for having such an opportunity. First, about the concept and overview of the JCM joint crediting mechanism. Uh, this uh, illustration shows the concept of the leapfrog type development. I would say this is a more concept than a theory. Japan and other developed economies follow this path of development. And uh, in a short period of time, it is imperative to realize a low carbon society. On the other hand, Asian societies are growing very fast in terms of economy at the same time. If they are to follow the same path as developed economies, that means uh, they have to experience massive consumption of energy resulting in pollution. And uh, the question is how we can reduce the time before they transition into the, 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 the same status as uh, the developed economies, and that is a low carbon society. And uh, that could be facilitated by JCM to realize leapfrog development. Now talking about JCM, the mechanism itself is quite simple. Uh, this is based upon the bilateral agreement uh, to complement CDM. 
between Japan and host nations, with a subsidy partly coming from public capital funding, we intend to transfer technology for low carbon society and then together with a system with high transparency the 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 technology introduced there is designed to reduce greenhouse gas emission and the part of the reduction could be transferred to Japan as a credit. So this would realize win win situation between two sides in introducing excellent low carbon technology to host countries and now talking about JCM so far we entered into agreement with 11 countries so now we are coming to the phase of project implementation with those 11 countries now in the second part of my pr presentation I'd like to explain about the large-scale projects uh, to realize them, feasibility surveys are introduced and uh, they are considered as one of the tools and uh, that's I'd like to attach on. This shows the flow of uh, the budget for current fiscal year. The CDM project, once it is implemented, and the greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction, that's uh, the goal of the CDM. Therefore, at the time of the project formulation, the feasibility study is supported as a part of the project. And then in the project introduction phase, the, there are three mechanisms available for funding, and especially th those uh, two in the bottom. The, the one from the, the second from the bottom is about JICA related funding or ADB fund established. So that the funding is uh, offered uh, to facilitate introduction of the technology effective for greenhouse gas emission reduction. And for those two, for instance, it could be on the order of a billions of yen to uh, the tens of billions of yen. With some slides, I'd like to explain about how the system is actually uh, implemented with the funding available. Due to time constraint, I can't elaborate on them. Now coming to this slide, uh, this is about the projects for current fiscal year. There are 15 of them, and uh, they are located in various parts of Asia. Uh, you can refer to the website for details. And uh, here uh, we are interested in implementation of the project, and there are six points that are significant talking about feasibility study I think there was the the opportunity for the meeting among Asian city representatives Japanese uh, side representatives uh, private sector representatives uh, to talk about JCM and uh, uh, that meeting that was held two days ago and in fact uh, the the feasibility study is not the end of the project. In fact, how we can implement actual study, actual project, and uh, that's important. And therefore, the and at the feasibility study phase, uh, there are points that we need to consider, including those that are listed here. And the the final goal is to create low carbon society in Asia. And uh, this is uh, supported by formulation of the large size projects. I expect a hearing from other cities afterwards, but uh, I'm sure that they would agree that not only technology, but also the planning toward low carbon cities, for instance, uh, they are essential as well. And thus, uh, we have created a local government platform to promote inter-local city cooperation 
and we intend to offer comprehensive support as much as we can in implementing feasibility study, eventually leading to the uh, the project for realizing as such as JCM. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so thank you uh, very much, Kino-san, for highlighting uh, some of the uh, activities that are uh, happening underneath the uh, JCM uh, and for uh, noting uh, some of the recent progress as of just uh, yesterday. Um, this is a very dynamic uh, mechanism and we look forward to seeing uh, how it can facilitate uh, low carbon development at the urban level, uh, especially in uh, Asian context. Um, we are going to once again divide this up into uh, two sessions and uh, so that means we unfortunately want to try to close this part of the uh, uh, dialogue uh, by uh, um, 3.25. Uh, so that gives us, unfortunately, a very short uh, five minutes for a quick panel discussion. Uh, but I've seen uh, the presentation skills of my colleagues, and I'm sure that they can keep their remarks succinct but enlightening at the same time. Um, my uh, questions are uh, for all three of the presenters uh, from uh, Ministry of Environment and uh, Wuppertal and uh, OECD. And uh, for Wuppertal, I just wonder if, uh, Dr. Van Jacob, if you can just briefly comment on um, uh, how you envision uh, potentially scaling up uh, some of the activity that's going on in Botrop into uh, other cities uh, outside of Botrop. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Matsumoto, I'm also wondering if you can comment a little bit upon this uh, opportunities for scaling some of the work that you're doing um, uh, in uh, Asian cities and maybe some of the challenges that might be unique to Asia. And then last but not least, uh, uh, Kino-san, if you can perhaps just comment very briefly on uh, some of the ways that the MOEJ is trying to facilitate sharing of information and ideas between Japanese cities and other Asian cities. Uh, five minutes, and uh, that's for all three of you, so let's start. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, how to scale up uh, projects like uh, the represented Innovation City project. Uh, actually, they are doing it right now in the, in the region uh, I, I presented. Uh, this is kind of easy. The competition uh, was, uh, was for the 16 cities of the region, and of course it's now easy to upscale um, the concept of the, uh, to the neighbor cities uh, of this region. Uh, this will not be possible one-to-one -one, uh, when you look at an international context. Here, of course, these concepts have to be adjusted, have to be uh, they have to take uh, into account the, the local uh, sp uh, specificers and uh, this will not be able without uh, local partners and um, we just did this in another uh, project which is called Low Carbon Future Cities, a project uh, in cooperation between the city of Dusseldorf and the city of Wuxi in China and there we find out that there are a lot of hurdles and barriers uh, adopting these concepts we develop uh, in Europe. Thank you, and uh, Dr. Matsumoto, please. Can you clarify a little bit the question again? Sure. Yes, um, I'm wondering if uh, you can comment a little bit on um, some of the approaches that uh, are being recommended for uh, green cities uh, in uh, Asia, how we can try to spread uh, this to cities. So you mentioned several key cities where Kyoto Kyushu um, and uh, uh, Chicago, Paris, uh, how can we try to spread this approach? Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, no. Thank you very much. What I think is, first, the Asian cities in developing countries or emerging countries, and also the cities in developed countries, they are vastly different. Because of the difference, you may think that it is impossible to share experiences, but it's wrong. That's the first thing. And that's the first thing. The vast difference is not going to be a problem of learning. And the second point is knowledge transfer or technology transfer. If there is a technology available, you might want to transfer. But if it's a policy, 
It is not a transfer. It's more like mutual learning. That's the second point. For the very first point, yes, they are different. Two groups of cities are different. But as you study them, say, in Stockholm, we discovered that the city of Stockholm is very much advanced in terms of the green growth. It's amazing. But what neighboring cities are doing, the ci citizens of Stockholm does not or do not know what's going on in neighboring cities. They may be competing with each other, but there is not much collaboration happening between the Stockholm city and its neighboring cities. In the major cities, are uh, not so much interested in integration with other cities. And this is a challenge, the challenge which is experienced not only in advanced countries, but also in developing countries, say Jakarta, for example, and its neighboring uh, cities. We do similar uh, problems between a major city and its surrounding neighboring cities in developing countries as well. So the cities in developing countries and developed countries are different, but uh, they do have problems in common, common problems as well. And this common area is that uh, we, will, we focus on. As we study further, uh, Asian cities, European cities, Japanese cities, and American cities, we want to lay the ground so that all these cities can learn from each other. What I like to say is that between Japanese cities and Asian cities, what sort of information can be exchanged? In other words, what are the benefits? the inter-city relationship can achieve. It's very hard to explain in a brief time, but I can talk about three things. First of all, say there is a system project. It is not just one single dot or point. It is not just a waste problem. This one single problem is related to other issues. It could be congestion, it could be urban problems. So it's not a dot, it's a whole plane of problems. In the past experience of many Japanese cities, uh, for example, the experience of overcoming uh, pollution issues, that can be shared with Asian cities. We can help to lay the theoretical ground that are convincing enough to many Asian cities because we have succeeded in solving some of the city problems in the past in Japan. And it's not just technologies, but systems and soft part of technologies. Say, waste management. Incineration is not the sole solution. We can actually incinerate at the same time, generate power utilizing the exhaust heat. In that case, you can also combine that with a possible uh, education given to citizens, the communication to citizens. So it's not just one single technology that is to be transferred. We have to make a whole package of surrounding uh, solutions as well much uh, panelists and uh, uh, Kino-san, that was a wonderful way to sort of uh, punctuate the panel. Um, and uh, I'm not going to summarize exactly uh, everything that was said because we're short on time here, but rather just like to uh, extend my uh, congratulations to the panelists and then uh, extend the microphone to uh, Kage-sensei uh, to bring us um, gradually into the even more applied setting where we talk to some of the city policymakers themselves. Uh, thank you once again to everybody. Appreciate it. Now then, we'd like to begin part two. And now we have a different panelist to the podium, so please uh, wait in your seat. 
And so the panel, new panelists will sit, uh, the, take a seat. Now that uh, we have a, a new setting for part two, we'd like to begin part two of the panel discussion. Now we have seven panelists. Four are from Asia. And a three on the extreme right are the ones that are engaged in uh, various projects, Yokohama and Kawasaki. In fact, uh, they are local here. And in part one of this panel discussion, we talked about the theory and uh, the uh, practice to realize sustainable cities. Now, based upon that, how we can actually implement those initiatives uh, in city setting. Uh, we heard uh, some discussion related to uh, local cities in Asia in part one to some extent or limited extent, but uh, we'd like to now expand the discussion whether it would work, what could be the challenges, uh, where they're headed for, and so on. The first, we will hear from four local uh, the Asian cities, and then I would ask them to give us a brief a presentation of each city. If I am to introduce all of them at the beginning, that would be quite time consuming, and therefore I would uh, introduce each panelist before his or her presentation. Starting from Cambodia, we have with us the speaker from Siem Rip City. Uh, this is quite famous because of Angkor Wat. In fact, this is one of the uh, most popular Asian uh, holiday destinations, and uh, now the tourists are coming a large a number, and that could also come up with the problems as well, the the traffic, congestion, water and air, pollution, and so on. And the, the, they are currently considering the a partnership with Kamakura City for JCM. We have with us the mayor of uh, Sharon uh, Rip, so please. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, to the Ministry of Environment that invited me to uh, in uh, to Japan and especially to participate in this uh, uh, forum, uh, ISAP forum. Uh, my name is So Pratong. I'm an acting governor of Simrip City. Uh, I uh, very glad to. Uh, show you some uh, urban planning development in uh, Simbib City. <coughs> so my uh, presentation will be uh, uh, five points, but I'm very uh, briefly uh, to uh, introduce to all uh, participants. <coughs> as you know that uh, Simbib City is well known as the World Cultural Heritage 
uh, where is a uh, like chairman uh, said that is a uh, uh, famous for the Angkor area. So uh, today, uh, the tourists come to Simrip cities uh, around four million uh, uh, tourists come to Simrip, and also the local participant, uh, local uh, uh, people also uh, come to Simrip, and now uh, the population is increased every day, uh, every year, and now uh, uh, around. Uh, 242,000 uh, inhabitants with uh, uh, 50,000 uh, family in uh, Simbib City. And uh, of course, uh, because of the, we can say that uh, Simbib City is like a bomb city, so uh, 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 the current development here in Simbib, uh, because of the uh, more population, more the tourists, uh, make the uh, city more very busy and uh, uh, the local authority like a uh, national uh, uh, government try to develop our city to uh, uh, to make the sustainable and a livable uh, city in Cambodia. There are some, uh, uh, if you go to uh, uh, our city, so we can uh, see that uh, there are four different kinds of uh, uh, living of the people that uh, we can divide it into four. First, uh, the upper area is the conservation area. Most than uh, 35% of the uh, land area is belong to the World Heritage. And uh, uh, the second is the urban center area. That are the, there are a lot of uh, uh, growing of urbanization uh, and more construction uh, built every year. And the third is uh, the agricultural, and the last one is the uh, the sub lake. There are some uh, village we have uh, uh, flooding. So uh, there are some problem. Uh, I, I think it's like the same city in uh, Asia country. First, we, uh, we are facing with the uh, traffic jam, but because uh, the infrastructure, public infrastructure, is not support to the increasing of the number of the tourists and uh, the local well, so uh, this again about the drainage system and the uh, uh, drainage water. So also we are facing in the Simrip city. And of course, that make us a uh, very headache is uh, about the environment issue. So uh, I, I mean, uh, we have a problem with the solid waste management and uh, also the air pollution, also the uh, uh, noise and everything. Of course, one thing uh, we are facing uh, with the uh, resettlement, but informal resettlement. So this is also the problem that because there are a lot of uh, uh, people come to find work in the Simrim. For this, uh, we are improve. Uh, we, we try to improve our city, make more sustainable. So the government uh, put our city like uh, make the competition and uh, apply for the clean city uh, contest. And in the clean city contest, there are uh, different kind of. Uh, uh, indicator and most of the uh, indicators uh, is uh, uh, regarding to the environment issue. This is some uh, example that we are trying to improve our city more uh, uh, sustainable regarding to the sewage, drainage, uh, road network in the urban center and of course we are develop some uh, facility for the tourists like uh, garden, public toilet, or security, or eco-transport, because uh, there are crowd of pe people, crowd of tourists, so make a lot of air pollution. We have uh, one uh, research uh, uh, project called Eco-Mobility that uh, we try to, uh, uh, we try to uh, use the eco-motorcycle uh, uh, in the uh, Angkor area. And the second, we would like to increase the, the income to the uh, driver, and of course, the reduce all uncle uh, impact. So I mean, the the air pollution is not only affect to the uh, local people, tourists, but also to our temple. And uh, uh, still now, we are research for around 4,000 uh, uh, remote motor, and we are working with them. And we will see that uh, this project will come in the future. So uh, <coughs> this is very uh, briefly about the, our uh, situation in Oxymib City because of the time limit. So uh, 
Again, I would like to thank for the uh, uh, Japanese government that invited us to come here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I understand that rapid urbanization is taking place and an increasing number of tourists are visiting. You are engaged in eco-mobility project, which is very unique. Thank you very much for introducing that. The second city we want to hear is Batam of Indonesia. We have Mr. Ami Risli. Batam city is in the south of Singapore. It is a neighboring uh, island. It's about 40 minutes by ferry over Maraca Strait. In 1989, uh, trade, uh, free trade zone was designated. It's experiencing rapid growth. The population is about 700,000 today. A great pleasure for me to be here to discuss and to share with you. On behalf of Batam City, my name is Zamir. Um, let us uh, reintroduce to you the Batam City is uh, very close to Singapore and Malaysia, as well as Asian uh, city. Um, we have uh, uh, the blob. Uh, Batam City is FTZ area, free trade zone, with a cover of uh, 715 uh, uh, hectare. We have used it 30% uh, of them, and we still uh, have uh, space for the 70%. And um, this is uh, good news. Uh, we have uh, uh, developed in uh, part of the vision is in transshipment, service, and trading. Uh, we would like to continue um, the infrastructure uh, development, um, but we still have a problem with uh, uh, environmental, uh, how to green and clean the city, because of the population increase uh, by uh, 100,000 uh, people a uh, year, and also a lot of uh, should be infrastructure with uh, develop it for them. And also, Batam City is a small uh, island, a sm city in the small island. The island itself is, uh, uh, compared to the other part of Indonesia, like uh, uh, Java, uh, Java, Kalimantan, or Sulawesi, but it is, uh, we have a limited land to do some, uh, suppose that we plan to adopt uh, solid waste management, but not in a traditional way of uh, uh, landfill site with the, uh, but we would like to adopt more advanced, of course, in low carbon, uh, efficient and effective technology itself. Uh, the good news, we have uh, started uh, 30 years ago in 1970 of uh, modern uh, facility of uh, airport, uh, seaport, uh, cargo, included the cargo port. Uh, we have uh, the blob of uh, interna international ferry terminal. Uh, there is a uh, airport and electricity, power, water supply. We build a, a reservoir is enough for the uh, at least uh, 3 million people. Now we have uh, 1.2 uh, people, but I hope that um, the city should be at least, uh, the bigger city should be. We, 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 we need your help to design our city, not more than one million. And we would like to build a new city for the other uh, a million. If we have a population with three million, it should be three cities surrounding. This is the total investment. Uh, we have it until right now from uh, government, foreign and domestic itself. Uh, this is a project for coming. 
forthcoming, forthcoming project of uh, infrastructure. Cargo seaport is still needed uh, in extension and international compensation center with a treatment facility, uh, bridge from uh, Batam to Bintan uh, Island. And this is uh, uh, my, uh, what uh, personally I handle this project, waste to, uh, energy project uh, with the status of uh, a bidding process right now. Uh, these are uh, our expected from uh, GCM, City to City Cooperation. Uh, let me repeat again. Um, we would like to clean and green and also the smart this city as the world class. Like uh, we have agreed to make uh, collaboration, cooperation between Yokohama City is our partnership uh, to share, to learn what they have done it, uh, in the past to develop uh, the city of Yokohama. Um, we would like, um, the big problem is uh, we have um, not enough capability, even uh, the rapid growth of uh, economic uh, between uh, six to seven percent, still uh, uh, limited capability to start with the advanced technology itself. So we need uh, some uh, scheme from uh, GCM in order to support us in case of to implement it, uh, this waste to energy project in Batam city. In case of uh, <clears throat> a bridging with the theory and practice um, between the, the host city and also in our city, in case of Batam city, um, of course, for a waste to energy project, we have in the bidding process. What we need more for the other project, uh, in our um, opinion, we have to do that by first, we have done it by, by scientific approach, is social, economic, and also political. We need also learn from, from Japan itself. If they change some uh, uh, mayor, same uh, governor, or even uh, prime ministers, there are not much change to the development itself. That's uh, some uh, compares with uh, still in, in, in our country, in Indonesia, that we would like to, to learn more. And we would like to make some priority in order to implement in the, the project uh, we have uh, uh, necessary approach before by scientific cell. Of course, we would like to build the partnership between all the multi-stakeholders and multidiscipline itself. Uh, we'd like to share experience is our of course, first in, uh, to the Yokohama city, as well as the other uh, cities in, in Japan. Uh, we would like to lease some potential uh, resources in order to implement this project and the other, the next project, uh, man, money, and also the time frame uh, in short, mid, and long-term program. Uh, we'd like to involve involved uh, all of experts here, uh, experienced cities, and also organization, uh, as well as uh, IGES, uh, ISAP, and also the other organization, OECD, uh, World Bank, or uh, ADB. Um, my idea also, I would like to create some uh, module project based on local wisdom. And we would like to copy this uh, module project, whatever the module supports a waste energy module or a wastewater in it, uh, project or the other project uh, with or without modification. Uh, that's uh, my suggestion to this. And if you have any contact, we would like to welcome all of you to come to Batam, uh, small island but uh, cheaper, cheaper, yeah, that's uh, the advantage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I realize that uh, 
Uh, that uh, the city or island is growing very fast as well, and various challenges as well as future plan were discussed. And also, he suggested the 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 cooperation or help uh, expected from Japan and Yokohama City as well. Now, also from Indonesia, we have a speaker from Bandung. We have with us Ayu Shukenja, Ms. Ayu Shukenja. It is located at the the western part of uh, West Java, and we know that uh, there is the abundant uh, engineering institute. It is about two hundred kilometers from Jakarta, and uh, I've never been there, but I hear that uh, the 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 climate is very comfortable. And I'd like to give the floor to the speaker. Yes, Ayushu Kenja. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, inviting me to come to Japan and speak here. I'm from, uh, my name is Ayushu Kenja. Uh, I'm not a singer. I hear that from moderator that Ayu is a singer in Japan. Uh, I'm from Bandung City, uh, part of uh, West Java and uh, Indonesia. My presentation is about the low carbon city planning in Bandung. Uh, this is Bandung, uh, it's a capital of West Java province, uh, the third largest city in my country with population of 2.5 million in 2013. Bandung is located at about 768 meters above sea level. It has become a location that a cool place to uh, at our city. It is about uh, 540 kilometers southeast of Jakarta. It has uh, become another problem to us uh, because of uh, the population also is uh, existing, is uh, growing, and the, uh, at the um, weekend, uh, coming from Jakarta, uh, increasing the population uh, more than three millions. It has also become a problem to uh, environment, such as in air pollution with uh, with solid with water and uh, source of the water resource. Uh, Bandung City follow low carbon policy in Indonesia. Example for uh, CO2 emission intensity uh, of energy sector is uh, greenhouse uh, gas per capita in uh, 2050 is 6.90 uh, 6 6 uh, one ton CO2. Uh, Bandung City use co benefit approach basic policy for sustainable society. Uh, Bandung also promote green technology in pollution management in air pollution, waste water, uh, solid waste remediation and clean up of soil and water, noise and vibration abatement, environment monitoring analysis and assessment. Uh, also, and also clean technology and product and uh, resource, resources management. Uh, Bandung uh, City have a target in a low carbon city plan in middle uh, program in uh, 1914 to 1918 uh, in Green open space, uh, public lighting, and uh, also 
sustainable solid waste management, waste treatment, waste water treatment, uh, transportation. Uh, we already uh, have a green space uh, in 20%, but we have a target at 26, I'm sorry, 23% in, nine, in, in uh, the middle uh, program. And we have target uh, to increase public lighting spot from uh, nine, uh, 27,000 to uh, 36,000 spot uh, lighting and also uh, changing the uh, the lighting from uh, sodium and, and mercury to LED. And also we have a target in solid meat management in uh, waste to energy in 35 uh, and landfill, we, ha we, we have target to decrease to 25, and three air, we have target 30%. And wastewater we, uh, treatment, we have target 75, 74%. And transport, we have a target also in uh, quality and quantity in at, uh, best, at best mass. Uh, Mass rapid transport, skywalk, and bike sharing. This is our program in low carbon uh, program society in Bandung. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Low carbon city plan, as he reported, has been carried out in many different uh, aspects. Bandan City is working with the city of Kawasaki. I think the representative of Kawasaki City may talk about Bandan as well. Uh, now, uh, going to Bangkok in Thailand, we have Ms. Nguyen Phan. Uh, Bangkok, as you know, is the capital of Thailand, the center of its economy, and there have been many uh, Japanese companies locating their bases in Bangkok. Bangkok has the technical cooperation with Yokohama City. It is also working with JICA, master plan to fight against the climate change uh, has been drawn by Bangkok. So please, floor is yours. And, um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today I would like to share a brief of um, developing sustainable city in Bangkok with you. Um, as you already know that Thailand is the capital city, oh, sorry, Bangkok is the capital city of Thailand with a population of 10 million and uh, we located in the southeast of Asia. Um, the population of 10 million has caused a uh, huge challenges, um, especially for the city management to deal with so many environmental problems, such as uh, air quality problem, um, solid waste management, flooding, and coastal erosion, and also traffic congestion. For the sectoral distribution of um, greenhouse gas emission in Bangkok, 49% uh, is from transportation, and 35% from electricity, and the rest are from other sources. Our policy and the 12-year Bangkok development plan for the period of um, 2009 and 2020 uh, provides us the strategic framework with its key focus on green Bangkok development. We have a green transport plan and policy, and also we have a better air quality plan, also a strategy of solid waste management, 
This is the master plan on solid waste management in Bangkok from um, 2007 to 2026. Um, we plan to have um, biological technology, 31%, and also thermal technology for, for uh, 42%. This is the future plan of uh, solid waste management. We have a uh, short term, long term, medium term, and long term plan until um, 2031. Um, VMA also have an action plan on um, global warming mitigation, which has set a goal to achieve 15% reduction of greenhouse gas emission. Um, the target to reduce CO2 in um, 2012 uh, is 9.75 million ton, and the total amount is 6.98 million ton. And now BMA is formulating a 10-year master plan uh, with the uh, supported by JICA. This is the five sector. Um, now we are cooperating with OECD to do a green goal project in Bangkok, as um, the people from OECD already mentioned that and also the MOU with Yokohama that we have and we um, hope to have a very good cooperation with the Japanese government further. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Well, we are running short of time and therefore uh, sorry that I had to rush you. And now, in response, uh, we'd like to hear from Japan. There are three speakers from Japan. <coughs> so first, I'd like to introduce those three cities that are represented here today. All of them are advanced cities in terms of uh, initiatives on international cooperation, as well as the environment-related challenges and the clean cities. Uh, first, uh, the the city is Yokohama City with 3.7 million population. And in fact, we are right now in Yokohama City. So I'd like to invite Mr. Yoko Nomura to the uh, podium. And then uh, he will be followed by the, the Kawasaki City with population of 1.4 million. It's located just between Tokyo and Yokohama near Tama River and uh, industrialized uh, the region has been transformed into research institute complex. We have with us Mr. Yokota today. And then, last but not the least, from Kitakyushu City. In fact, that's where my university is located, with a population a little bit less than 2 million. It has a history of overcoming severe uh, environmental pollutions. And they have uh, more than 30 years of uh, experience in cooperation with uh, Vietnam, uh, Haiphong, and a uh, city in Malaysia, among others, for promotion of international cooperation on environment-related activities. And we have with us Mr. Hitsumoto of Bureau of International Strategy, the Green City Report of OECD, on Hitakyushu City was in fact uh, the compiled under the leadership of Mr. Hitsumoto. For those three cities, I'm afraid uh, the time is rather limited and therefore I'd like to ask a question to each city and ask them to answer. You can use a PowerPoint uh, whenever necessary. I so hope that you would answer uh, my question according to the uh, PowerPoint that you prepared. Now, the first question. R remember that in part one, we heard presentations, and if you have any comments, uh, you can share with us your impression about p uh, part one. And then, by looking back, the rapid economic growth uh, phase for 20 years or 30 years, 
how transition of your city has evolved. Uh, that could be urbanization, population increase, a change of industry mix, uh, what about pollution, how environment improvement initiatives were undertaken, including the uh, noise vibration, water, air, as well as uh, waste management. What about the green uh, open space, uh, greening the area, among others? So, starting from Mr. Uh, or starting from Yokohama City, please. Thank you very much. I'd like to start off by representing Yokohama City. As was introduced, I'm Executive Director of Climate Change Policy Headquarters of City of Yokohama. My name is Nomura. First, I want to thank IGES and UNU and all those who have made this forum possible in Yokohama City. And at the same time, at this conference, being able to speak to you today, this opportunity, I would like to express my gratitude for this opportunity too. In the first part of this session, it was quite stimulating. This was a very good learning opportunity, as Mr. Nakan Ms. Nakanoen mentioned, uh, three pillars, environment, society, and economy, how we can hit the best balance between these three factors. And if the balance is tipped, what might happen? Looking back on the history of Yokohama City, you would realize what happens when the balance is lost. And how can we actually rebalance the three factors? Uh, although the time is limited, I want to discuss what we are doing today. So first slide. Can I start with the first slide? First of all, um, we are here in Yokohama City. I want to introduce our city. Just briefly, we are right in the center of Japanese archipelago. Uh, more than 150 years ago, in 19, 1859, we opened the international port. We only have a few hundreds in terms of population, but today the population size grew to 3.7 million. We are the largest city in Japan in terms of population. As this PowerPoint, uh, early PowerPoint, uh, indicates, uh, we have a gross product of the city is 12.7 trillion yen, 12.5 billion U.S. dollars. It's the same as the GDP of Hungary. So population is uh, 3.7. For the past 150 years, we have been able to increase the population. With this increase of population, we do face many cities' unique problems. We have year plotted on x-axis, and we have a uh, number of households there in terms of tens of thousands. The line indicates the population increase. The number of uh, household increase indicated in the upper line. We have uh, Yokohama air raid uh, population dipped there, but after that, we actually had a rapid population growth. When I was born, 1960, the year after I was born, actually, 1.73 million. 20 years later, in 80, uh, in 20 years, 27.7 million, double the size of the population. We have 3.7, 1.6 households living in Yokohama City. In such a short period of time, we experienced a rapid population growth. No other city in Japan experienced this rapid growth. In the coastal area, we had developed many industrial complex. And as a result, what happened? These are not from Asian cities. These are photos taken in Yokohama City 50 years ago. We had frequent traffic jam, and there had been order from river systems, is polluted. I'm pretty sure Kawasaki and uh, Kita Kyushu would talk about the similar problems in the past. Many cities in Japan face with these problems. In many cities, we even sacrifice many lives of citizens. So Yokohama decided not to be complacent, not just government, NPO, enterprises, and universities, all take part in the efforts to implement solutions. We have conducted many different uh, policies. I want to only focus on three. One is leadership. 
How leadership is critical. The leaders are accountable for explaining to citizens accountability and transparency are definitely essential factors that need to be there. And at the same time, well, businesses are run independently for better efficiency, but we have to have cross functional uh, collaboration. And this would result in a happy result 10 years, 20 years later. All of these uh, holistic uh, viewpoints are critical. We have been promoting city plans over a decade. I want to talk about six strategic projects that we started. Uh, just one example, as you can see up the right hand side, the photo indicates the southern part of Yokohama City, Kanazawa District. We had a reclaimed land uh, where we constructed the industry complex, industrial park. Many uh, SMEs which were dispersed were asked to move to this area to co-locate for better efficiency. And freed area could be utilized for residential development as well as high quality industrial development. And underground, we have subway. Uh, we have uh, lower uh, photos indicating subway systems, highways, and bridge. In 1965, local governments have never made announcement of this size of public project. Of course, there was strong resistance. There is no guarantee, people said. There are national projects going on, so we had a very strong battle, resistance from national government as well. But starting this, cities taking initiative. As I said, accountability is important. So the mayor had accountability, being able to explain what is going to be the vision for the citizens of Yoko. It is important to have a dialogue with citizens. As you can see in this photo, the mayor then actually conducted this meeting with citizens. This was stuffed as 10 million people uh, meeting, where actual number of citizens there is about 6,000. But right in the center, there was a mayor. The mayor is surrounded by all the 6,000 citizens. There's no way the mayor could talk to each citizen directly, but this is a stage. The mayor is willing to talk with citizens. This could be a good uh, hint for many Asian cities. Uh, having multiple occasions like this, uh, showing the willingness to talk with citizens, uh, it is very important. This would result in a better awareness. And uh, as an extension of this, uh, we are currently working on PPP, Public-Private Partnership. This is the diagram indicating our project. Left hand side, we have higher quality service provision, new business opportunity being created, and also we want to uh, invigorate local economy. These are three pronged uh, goals. As you can see, in order to achieve these goals, we have community, university, uh, local governments. All of them are engaged in dialogue. That's right in the center of this circle. So stakeholders are actually connected on this platform, as was discussed in the first part of the session. And this stage should be presented. It doesn't have to be standardized, but you have to have this willingness displayed. It's not top down. It's equal, a win-win relationship that needs to be built. Many enterprises are very supportive of this initiative, and the city of Yokohama is actually deploying this same mechanism in many other areas. This is a recent roundtable meeting, uh, one good, ex good example. The city planning is now discussed with community members. Uh, every time we have a meeting, we have more than 100 people participating. We actually have multiple meetings every month, and this will be reported, fed back to citizens, and then this feedback will be used as a basis for further discussion. So this is how we expand our project. So repeating this is very important. City planning is 
really based upon efforts like this. Uh, of course, what we want to do is to become the future city. We talk about the green city often. We do have rich greenery. Uh, you won't see much greenery, Minato Mirai, this area. But if you drive a little bit, you would see the farmland and a lot of greenery. Uh, the farm produce production is largest amongst all the prefectures in Japan. So we had a plan to enrich greenery in our city as well protecting forests, protecting farmlands, increased greenery. The three goals were set. We try to improve greenery in terms of quantity and quality. In order to ensure enough funding, Yokohama introduced its own independent uh, tax system for residential tax and corporate tax. If you become a citizen of Yokohama, you have to pay additional tax, 900 yen per year. That's additional tax that citizens are asked to pay. But citizens will be enjoy uh, richer greenery. This is a good example for all of us to cooperate to achieve sustainable city. This is a sewage system. Uh, permeation in Yokohama City, BOD is biological uh, oxygen. As you can see, in the 1970s, uh, we had very poor quality of water, but by having better water supply and waste treatment system, we have very good water quality. We now have the sewage uh, service available to every household. Well, uh, when I asked the question, I asked uh, about the 20 to 30 year span because I thought this kind of project would take about 20 to 30 years. Well, you showed us uh, data about the sewage system, and in fact, uh, that took about 20 years. So, how long do you think it took uh, for? such a, a project. Actually, 20 years, uh, that's too short. Talking about sewage system, when I uh, graduated from university back then, that was about 46 or 50 percent. Nowadays, it's 100 percent. So it 30 to 40 years in Minato Mirai district. There used to be a shipyard, and the shipbuilding yard was relocated, and then the uh, town development was conducted. So I would say that uh, we are uh, very much behind uh, other cities like Shanghai, for instance. Well, in Japan, trial and error, uh, that's uh, one of the uh, processes that many cities are uh, going through. But in fact, uh, the two Asian cities, uh, I think uh, you have to consider the possibility of 20 years, 30 years, or 40 years uh, for your project. Now I'd like to turn to Kawasaki City. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Yokota. I'm from Kawasaki City. Uh, Environment Research Institute is the organization that I belong. They due to time constraint because uh, Kawasaki City outline has been already explained. Uh, first about uh, the Kawasaki coastal area, how the reclaimed land uh, has developed. The originally Kawasaki City wanted to promote industrialization, and therefore, the reclamation started since around 1940s. The uh, first western part of the coast uh, was uh, the reclaimed uh, with the uh, cement factory and steel factory, steel mill were introduced. And then came the petroleum complex introduced when the reclaimed land uh, was uh, expanded and complete in around 1960s. And then when the uh, all the reclamation was complete, and then the uh, steel mill was relocated uh, from uh, the old uh, reclaimed land to new reclaimed land around 2008. And this is about air pollution. You see that uh, the amount of uh, the air pollution that is SOX, uh, that's about 45,000 tons uh, back in 1970s. And therefore, we started from monitoring uh, using a telemeter uh, to gather data about uh, actual pollutant emission. And also various uh, innovative solutions were introduced. 
、uh, under the ordinance. Nowadays, it is down to about 500 tons, 500 tons of socks emitted per year. So I would say it's about one one hundredth compared to where we started. And likewise,、uh, in the case of、uh, SO2, Uh, the, it has decreased to a great extent in 1979 in all nine、uh, the measurement stations. All of them showed the compliance、uh, with the、uh, environment、uh, the guideline. On the left is、uh, when the pollution was、uh, the, the so、uh, severe in 1966. Now it is compared to 2010. And you see that、uh, in 2010, the view is so clear. You can see Mount Fuji as well, which is now World Cultural Heritage.、Uh, likewise, in the case of、uh, Yokohama, in her case as well, this shows water pollution. The pale blue represents the spread of sewage system. And.、Uh, Uh, first,、uh, the regulation was introduced into the industries, and then that was followed by the resident.、Uh, because uh, the homes, uh, residents, uh, the residential areas,、uh, those are also sources of the pollutants, and therefore, by incentives and infrastructure development, through those measures, in, the environment has improved to a great extent. In Japan, the、uh, pollution coming from industries was so severe so that、uh, it was industries that were subject to regulation and control. But now, in fact,、uh, the 20 or 30 years have passed since、uh, we started to focus on quality of life, and finally, we started to see major improvement. And so, to Uh, Asian cities, I would say that、uh, you should start from where you can start rather than starting from industries. And this is about water environment. On the left, there are two photos in 1975, Atama River. You see that the froth、uh, is generated, that's because of the detergent and effluent、uh, coming from houses. And、uh, before that, the water was so、uh, polluted, so that、uh, the, the, the stenching、uh, smell that was so、uh, severe. But now in 2010, The water quality has improved to a great extent so that、uh, even the sweet fish has come back. And、uh, we produced、uh, the green、uh, basic plan as well as the environment assessment、uh, ordinance ahead of other cities in Japan. And that、uh, we instructed industries to secure a green area within their premise. Thank you very much for、uh, giving us a very concise presentation.、Yep. Thank you very much. So, likely,、uh, it takes 20, 30 years,、uh, like in any other cities in Japan,、uh, Kawasaki succeeded in overcoming pollution. Leadership is important, as the Yokohama speaker said. Would you like to also make a comment on that? In Kawasaki City, it was designated as a government city changed. The new Mayor is innovative. Mayor introducing medical system to overcome pollution related diseases. The mayor actually exerted a very strong leadership. Let's go to Kita Kyushu City. I'm Hitsumoto, Executive Director of the Office of International Environmental Strategies. If you take a look at page three, since 1901 up to 2010, we have this history relating to environmental policies. Page four shows the photos. As Mr. Nakano said, we have been able to overcome pollution. And page five, Squatter settlement was the problem. Currently, many Asian cities have similar problems, but through dialogue with citizens, we have been able to improve our surrounding environments. It took us 20 to 30 years. That's the very first phase. The second phase, if you take a look at page 11. Waste 
management issue, how we can reduce waste, how can we promote recycling. That too requires dialogue with citizens. And page 12 shows public transportation. We have been able to improve infrastructure. Again, it required us 20, 30 years to achieve barrier-free facilities in major transportation areas. And currently in page 13, we have recycle-based society set as a target. We are promoting recycling industries. Page 14, smart grid, smart community. It's something that we are trying to achieve with distributed energy sources. So these are some of the projects uh, we are ready to engage in for the coming 20, 30 years. Now, with regard to our relations with uh, Asian cities, page 25, this is our assistant giving to Dialed in China, 27, that is air quality improvement. This is Slavaya Waste Management Support. Uh, in a community, composting technology has been introduced to reduce the waste volume by 30%. Page 29, Phnom Penh in Cambodia. We were able to reduce uh, the ratio of non-revenue water and by introducing coline, we could improve the quality of water supplied. Kita Kyushu City cooperated with these cities. It took us 30 years. Maybe these cities could shorten the time required to 10 years with assistance. These are some of the best practices that we can share with other Asian cities. And I believe that many Asian cities will be able to leapfrog or shorten the time required for the same development. So that's the case of Kita Kyushu City. From early on, Kita Kyushu has been engaged in many different projects. Uh, recently, environmental industry development. The latest example is Smart Grid. Another thing, as he just mentioned a little bit, Theory and policy, how theory can be translated into actual policies. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Yes, theories and practices. Kita Kyushu started off with practices. Page 7 shows that. Citizens took the initiative then to improve the environment. So the movement started from citizens in the 1950s. Citizens took the initiative to impact the administrative policies, and this is how the partnership started. For example, as you see in Kawasaki City's case, the Pollution Prevention Agreement through dialogue with citizens, government support what citizens want, and national project it can also promote technology development. So there are partnerships and different roles played by different partners. These are very important factors to actually implement theories into practices. So does it, uh, go we heard from three cities and now I realize that only five minutes are left before the end of the session. So I'm at a loss as to how to uh, proceed. Now that we heard about uh, initiatives, efforts by three cities in Japan, and now from Asian cities, given where they stand today, if you have any reaction, any questions uh, to uh, those cities or any questions uh, that could be answered by any cities from Japan. So if you have anything that you'd like to voice at this moment to Asian cities, to four speakers from Asia. Please. Okay, thank you. 
I want to know uh, how strong uh, leadership in Yokohama made a program success. It, uh, as we know, uh, major have a period time of leadership, but then uh, will change to another a new mayor. How to make a uh, stable the leadership to make program success? Thank you. It's a very difficult to answer your question. <laughs> uh, well, what I can offer is that uh, at the uh, the, the, in the first place, uh, I mentioned about uh, accountability and transparency as two keywords. Uh, in my presentation, I mentioned about 40 years ago, there used to be a wonderful mayor here that was uh, the, by name of Asukata. He was the one that was uh, eager to uh, go into the uh, in the midst of the, uh, the citizens and then uh, strongly advocate various policies that was unprecedented. You mentioned that uh, the mayor is uh, mayors change uh, after their term expire and uh, that sometimes policies are not succeeded. That's because uh, the citizens are not supporting anymore. About uh, the as long as the uh, the policies are strong enough, supported by citizens, that are because policies are essential to. Uh, the citizens, uh, then in such a case, there will be the uh, strong support from citizens, no matter who would be the mayor, for instance, about the sewage system. The, uh, the When the sewage system started to be introduced in Yokohama, I mentioned about the th 3.7 million citizens, and about 3 million of them started to say that uh, we want a sewage system uh, in their houses as well, and therefore, that's considered as a top priority, and therefore, therefore the, all the mayors uh, started to introduce the policy for spreading the uh, sewage. And so the, what is important is the policy that would be of the, uh, the close to the, uh, the heart of the citizens is something that uh, is necessary to be implemented by the mayors. Well, in the case of Kita Kyushu, uh, your efforts and initiatives are sustained for many years. And uh, was there any impact due to the change in the leadership? Regardless of the change of the leadership, the environmental initiatives in fact, uh, that has been maintained uh, since 1950s, so that uh, in a mayor election, in fact, the environmental issues are among the uh, top priority agenda in their platform, so that uh, even when the, uh, the new mayor is elected, I believe uh, in the continuity has been maintained in your city. Any other questions or comments from Asian cities? Thank you. Uh, my question, um, I don't know, is it, uh, directly to the uh, host city of Japan, but uh, in case of a uh, bottom project, especially waste to energy project, we would like to implement it, uh, those projects, but still uh, have, uh, there is some gap between uh, our capability to pay uh, the electricity tariff and also the tipping fee. Uh, still uh, lower, um, but um, if uh, the, the the bidder come to the commercial um, uh, institution or a banker, that, that still uh, uh, some difficulty to implement this project from a bidder point of view. I mean that from a commercial point of view, but um, we would like to ask to any um, uh, institutional or any uh, eco green uh, financial uh, budget system if it is support uh, bottom is a pilot a national pilot project for uh, indonesia at least for the first uh, project we needed uh, internal support first and after that for the second or the third project we would like to to do by our uh, by our uh, capability by by Indonesian side, uh, that's uh, our problem. And uh, how to implement it? I don't know. Maybe uh, Yokohama City or uh, uh, Kita Kyushu have a problem at that time. Is it uh, during the de development? 
is it Yokohama or is it uh, Kita Kyushu have uh, a booming of uh, financial from a local and also from uh, central government of Japan at the time? Thank you. Well, this may be a, a rather technical, tough question, but uh, the first from Yokohama City about funding 50 years ago. Y yes, we were poor back then. The population was growing, and now the beautiful city was created. The kids are born. What about the school? Well, school is something that the, the government would offer. But the government, uh, the local government, I mean, didn't have enough money. What did we do? The, we made a rules, for instance, uh, we want to construct uh, the school with sewage facility so that uh, you have to offer, for instance, the land for school construction or you have to pay for construction of the sewage system. So that uh, through various efforts, like for instance, make uh, land available at lower fee, uh, lower cost. Uh, so the including the, uh, the central government, we try to uh, consider how we can make the project sustainable. In the case of Yokohama City, for instance, if it is the uh, sewage system, 30% of the budget came from national government. Or the OSO, uh, the guarantee uh, uh, was offered uh, to the uh, municipality bond that was issued by the Yokohama City. Well, and also in the long run, the, uh, there was the uh, support from uh, World Bank that was given to the national government long time ago. Uh, any response from Kawasaki City? Nothing to offer. Then what about Kitakushu City? Yes, in that case, according to responsibility and the benefits, local governments, enterprises, or national government, depending on some circumstances, the burden sharing was considered so that the local municipalities, within their scope of their responsibility, they use tax money to undertake such public projects. And then there was a support, the funding support from national government. And also, there was an investment made by the private sector as well. And of course, that could be dependent on the uh, status of economic development, but uh, the burden sharing and the role, uh, the division of uh, roles uh, that have to be considered. And also, the, it has to be uh, based upon the assumption that the project is supported by citizens and how the uh, better ideas uh, could be produced for better financing. I thank you very much. I realize that uh, we are running short of time, but as a wrap-up, I believe uh, there is a wrap-up slide. So I'd like to spend some time to summarize our discussion. As you can see on this slide, making cities more sustainable in Asia, a bridging theory and practice. So we talked about theory first and then practice later. As we discussed, we have to have a vision that spans 20, 30 years. Well, some uh, person representing the city said 30 years not long enough, but you have to have a long standing vision, which needs to be written in the beginning. In order to realize the vision, leadership is critical. That too has been pointed out by several speakers. And as was discussed, we have a process. We need a process to translate uh, theories into practices. Each city have different set of theories. <coughs> so these theories need to be modified for each community the recipient of the project, and also the stakeholders' collaboration. You have to have a good connection with stakeholders. You have to have a comprehensive collaboration and uh, linkage with agent cities. City planning development experience needs to be shared widely so that both cities can expand their understanding. Thank you very much for everyone for participating, staying on the end of this session. Thank you once again for your participation. Uh, Professor Kage, uh, speakers, thank you very much. We would like to have a 10-minute break. Closing session will start a quarter to 5, 4.45. Please do not take out the receivers for translation. Leave the receivers on the table as you leave this hall. Thank you very much. <laughs>